Now, there are concerns social media platforms are policing what's acceptable to say and think after numerous accounts belonging to libertarian and conservative figures were banned over alleged hate speech. RTZ Libertranka takes a look now at what's uh, considered a violation of tech giants' policies. What matters are all of the stories we hear from all of you about the impact your connections have had on your lives. You can choose from an infinite range of topics that interest you and then easily follow that topic in the news. Countries and cultures are brought together like never before. That was the online world as we used to know it. Off limits to any of those pesky folks trying to set limits. In 2018, you'll be told to hold up if Twitter decides there's parts of your world that shouldn't be discovered. What if you're keen to know what someone has to say? Let it be former U.S. diplomat Peter Van Buren. You might as well unfollow your interests. The man's profile is shut down for good because he jokingly wished someone had eaten the face of his opponent in a Twitter rant. Honestly, that's by far not the most offensive thing you can find online. But what's abusive about showing Mr. Van Buren some support? Two users who did so got bans too. It's not about me. It's not about the group of us who are banned together. I think it's a, it's a bigger issue, and it's an issue that's, that's raised his head this week. People like us who are not part of the legacy media, we're not New York Times shapers of opinion, we're also allowed to have our say. So if someone from the New York Times or the Washington Post puts something up that we know is false, we can refute it almost in real time. That's very threatening, I think, for the powers that be. This tendency to want to shut people down uh, if they disagree with you is very dangerous. It's going down a very slippery slippery slope uh, toward totalitarianism. There's a word for that. C-E-N-S. Well, someone saw it coming when even perhaps the most controversial online talking head, Alex Jones, was told, get out of here by all major platforms. After all, they all have to stick to their own rules and keep people safe from hate speech. But then even those anti-left who kind of hate Jones went on alert. Could it be because they thought someone would click on their profiles and see a holdup pop up? Alex Jones is a bad guy, uh, but the problem is this. Once you start saying that hate speech is a rationale for banning people from social media, you get into some very, very vague territory. I'm no fan of Jones. Among other things, he has a habit of repeatedly slandering my dad by falsely and absurdly accusing him of killing JFK. But who the hell made Facebook the arbiter of political speech? Free speech includes views you disagree with. But there's no turning back when it comes to the online censorship evolution. So I'm not sure it works like that anymore, Mr. Cruz. Plus, people on the left are ecstatic. Bring it on, is their call. A definitive and crucial step forward in the fight against fake news and fringe extremism. Infowars is the tip of a giant iceberg of hate and lies that uses sites like Facebook and YouTube to tear our nation apart. These companies must do more than take down one website. The survival of our democracy depends on it. The world is getting older and a bit more authoritarian. Only lately, a top U.S. Intelligence Committee Democrat has come up with 20 legislative proposals for keeping online platforms under a close watch. Brace yourself as you might soon have to say goodbye to things like anonymous posts or accounts that can't be tracked down. Yeah, that covers just two of the 20. Well, amid all the accusations, Twitter is silencing debate. It was actually one of the few platforms not to ban Alex Jones, who, as Ilya's report just mentioned, was banned by a host of social media giants. This, though, has led to Twitter being criticised for being too tolerant. Well, in response, Twitter's CEO tweeted that Jones hadn't violated any of the platform's rules. We discussed the tech giant's actions with the former US congressman Ron Paul. He believes social media platforms are simply no longer independent. 
that is a real mixed bag. The social media, in one sense, is a real delight. There's a lot of information out there. I have benefited by it. But it originated with a lot of government assistance. And the biggest role that social networks play is uh, working with the government and giving the government the information. They do the work for the NSA. So it's a mixed bag. They call themselves private companies. The libertarian says, we don't regulate private companies. And, uh, and yet, it, it's so mixed. In, in an empire lies, the truth is treason. So when people blurt out the treason on the internet, it's not like they're saying something mean and ugly. It's, it's the things challenging the status quo is what they can't stand and it unnerves them. So they have to silence people. So it's more likely for an individual like myself to be silenced because I represent a challenge to the status quo. But if anybody understands our First Amendment, the First Amendment isn't there to talk about the weather. The First Amendment is there for us to be able to to challenge our government. But if we do that now, whether it's direct uh, uh, regulation from the government or indirectly through social media, we have a real challenge. I'm just hoping that technology can stay ahead of it all and that we can have alternatives uh, to the dependency on Twitter and these other companies that have been working hand in glove with the government.